When I hear the names Dave Logan and Greg Pruitt, I think of the 12 days of a Browns Christmas song that used to be out. That's right. A Remember that? Ago, yeah. Yes. So those two guys, boy, I had so much fun talking with them as they relived their days of the cardiac kids and also shared how their teammates and fans and that awesome coach, mm -hmm. Sam Ritigliano helped motivate them on the field and off. Plus, I also found out that football is still very much a big part of their lives this very day. And the cardiac kids have the hearts thumping again in Cleveland. Greg Pruitt, Dave Logan, cardiac kids, two of the best. Welcome. It's good to see you guys. Hey, thank you. For having thank you. Us. Thank you, absolutely. You guys did play together with the Cleveland Browns in the 70s, early 80s. Best time was the Cardiac Kids. You guys were two of the best. I'll speak for myself. I, I didn't want to let any of those guys down with Greg or Brian or Ozzy or Ruck or Calvin or Mike or any of those guys. And we, we were accountable to them. The Cardiac Days, talk about that. And for maybe our younger Browns fans who don't understand the name behind Cardiac Kids and came out how that came to be. But you guys won a lot of those games in just the very last minutes and seconds of, uh, of those games. And Logan is gonna go, it's touchdown Browns. Dave Logan scores, the Browns lead it, amazing. I, I think that thing sort of started in 78 and then morphed into yeah. the Cardiac Kids. I think we have three years, honestly, of, of Cardiac Kid type victories we have to talk about brian sight because he was such a big part and a big face uh to the cardiac kids i think about i want to say it's the washington redskins game uh the fellowship of christian athletes had an event with uh some of the brown fans in the stadium and brian flew back in to speak and as a result of that i got to watch the game with brian brian calling plays from the from the sweep, you know, when you break the huddle, they in this coverage, and he should be doing this with the football, and that with the football. I mean, he's calling it before it even happens, and that just reminded me how much he was on top of the game, how much he knew where he was going. And I can say as a former wide receiver, uh, what I appreciated about him was his accuracy. Uh, you know, he didn't put you in a position where you were gonna, you were gonna get knocked out Talk about the ultimate motivator in your coach, the great, great Sam Ritigliano. I always tell people, I say, if I hadn't gotten hurt and Ritigliano would have been the original coach, I might have been in the Hall of Fame. Because he was the first coach that really understood from my position all the things that I could do. Sam was truly a player's coach. I mean, Sam, I, I remember so many times yes. where I would come out of the game and Sam would walk up and say, what are you seeing and what do you need? Talk about the fans. I mean, I, I don't think a, another city has fans quite like our Browns fans. There was a definite roar at Municipal Stadium mm -hmm. that I, I just never felt at any other stadium. And I, and I think the nice thing about Cleveland fans, and I still believe this is true today, I mean, they're passionate football fans and they yeah. know football. And if, if, if you can, I mean, if you can play, they love you. Now, if you can't play, then, you know, not so much. And the day, I think you were in a game where uh, we played Houston and there were a couple of bad calls and the fans started throwing bottles on the field. I, I think it's the Cleveland fans that made them go from glass to plastic because of the, all the <laughs> bottles they threw on the field. All right, let's talk about what you guys are up to these days. Greg, you're part of the Fox 8 family. We're so lucky because we get to see yeah. you almost on a weekly basis. What else are you up to, Greg? People ask me, what am I doing? I said, well, I fish, I hunt, and I play golf. That's if you ask me. If you ask my, my friends, they'll say, he fish, he play golf, and he sleeps in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg must have saved more money than I did because I think he probably made more money. So I'm still, I'm still working. Uh, and, and listen, I enjoy what I do. I do a talk show every day in Denver from nine to noon. Uh, I'm the voice of the Broncos. This is my 31st year calling uh, the play-by-play -play of, of the Broncos, which has been a terrific opportunity for me. And, and I'm also, and Greg and I were talking prior to coming on, I'm also a high school football coach. Uh, this is my 28th year as a head coach. And I, I love working with kids. I love the game of football. That is awesome. Well, you guys are Cleveland Browns for life, and uh, thank you for making the city so proud. Hey, thank you, Seven. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Wow. Loved that conversation. We had so much fun because even growing up, you know, I remember going to practices and watching sure. them. And, oh, it was really neat to see them and hear their great stories. That was very cool. Good A evening. lot of good ones. That was nice. Thank you.